In textbooks, pictures of atoms are usually a bit like this. It's only a handy way of drawing them. We have absolutely no idea what they might look like. But we do know that they have three main constituents. Protons, neutrons and electrons. Protons and neutrons are part of the nucleus. Electrons surround the nucleus in energy shells. The protons in the nucleus have a positive charge. Neutrons are neutral. They have no charge. And finally, electrons have a negative charge, a charge of 1 minus. Both protons and neutrons have a mass of 1 on an atomic scale. Electrons have an insignificant mass, usually counted as 0. Returning to our diagram of an atom, this one I've drawn here is carbon-12. In symbol form, written with a C for carbon, with 12 and 6 denoting the atomic mass and the atomic number. Just in case you've heard other words and phrases, the atomic mass is sometimes called the nucleon number, and the atomic number is sometimes called the proton number. I'll explain that a little more in a moment. If we take this atom apart, it has got six protons. Now, the atomic number or proton number defines the atom. This is carbon because there are six protons. As well as having six protons, it has six electrons. In their normal state, atoms of an element have the same number of protons as electrons. The atom is normally uncharged. And this atom is rather symmetrical. It also has six neutrons. The number of neutrons and protons are by no means always equal. But the total mass of six protons and six neutrons adds up to the 12 of the atomic mass. To explain this more thoroughly, let's follow it up with three examples, three more elements, oxygen, sodium and iron. Oxygen must have eight protons because it shows eight. So that's the atomic number. To balance the charges, it must also have eight electrons. The atomic mass is 16. But we've accounted for 8 protons, so it must be 16 minus 8, 8 neutrons. Moving on to the second example, Na, which is sodium. The bottom number is 11, the proton number. It has 11 protons. It must also have 11 electrons. The total mass of 23 minus the mass of the 11 protons we already have means it has 12 neutrons. Finally, Fe, iron, has 26 protons, that is, the atomic number, and also, therefore, 26 electrons. With an atomic mass of 56, and we've already accounted for 26 protons, the number of neutrons must be 56 minus 26, 30, 30 neutrons. So to recap, the atomic number is the number of protons in the nucleus. Because it is a number of protons, it is often called the proton number. The atomic mass is the mass of the atom in atomic mass units. The mass of a single atom is always going to be close to a whole number, and is often quoted to that whole number. However, the exact definition of an atomic mass, which if you're doing an examination you may require, is that it is the mass of the atom on a scale where the mass of the most common carbon isotope, that's carbon-12, is exactly 12. On this scale, the mass of iron is 55.84, and of oxygen 15.999. These differences arise because as the atoms are created, the coming together of protons, neutrons and electrons result in huge energy changes which are reflected in the mass. One further example is the quotation of the atomic mass of chlorine, which is about 35 and a half, but not close to a whole number. And that is because all the chlorine in our environment consists of two isotopes. And there is a follow-on video explaining what an isotope is. And these two isotopes have atomic masses of 34 and 36. Because they're mixed together, the average turns out at this 35.453. Thanks for watching. You might find the follow-up videos on isotopes and ions useful.